So some really confusing and weird misleading stuff happened today. Of course, most of you guys probably saw the post by Arm on their Facebook page that made no sense at all, all about the A57s being in the Switch, which don't get me wrong, an A57 quad-core set would be enough to drive AI and do calls for different draws on the screen. But the whole thing that's weird to me is the way that Arm attempted to announce it, which made no sense, which once I saw it, I wasn't even going to talk about it, but everybody else decided to talk about it on YouTube before looking at it a little better. And then, of course, you guys kept sending me stuff on Twitter to ask, hey, what's going on with this? So I figured I'd make a quick video and just explain what's happening. So, of course, by the time I get home, this post is gone. It's down. I figured it wouldn't last. I saw it when I was at work, and I was like, this, this post is not going to stay up very long. It didn't. It came down, and I'm going to show you why. So right away, they post this image on Facebook, and what do they say? They say, see what Nintendo Switch has up its sleeve for March 3rd, powered by four times ARM Cortex-A7. There's a picture of the Switch, and the weirdest thing about this entire post is that they then link to another website. They're not linking to ARM, their website. They are linking to a site called AndroidPit.com. And what is AndroidPit.com doing? They are talking about the speculated announcements and stuff from Eurogamer, where they are talking about, this is a digital foundry stuff, where they're talking about the clock speeds and the idea that it may be running A57s with a modified X1. And this is from a while ago. This is what we were talking about so long ago. So Android Pit decides to try to put all this information together. A57s were named in theirs earlier today, I guess. And then all of a sudden, ARM, for some reason, decides that it's a good idea to announce this and then put it on their Facebook. So what ARM ended up doing today, they decided to link to a site that was speculating and then linking to another site that was speculating about rumors and leaks that were then speculated back to them. That sounds pretty awesome, right? That's kind of what happened today. For some reason, Arm decided to do this. Now, don't get me wrong, because what happened here more than likely is not completely Arm's fault. It was a supervisor's fault or somebody got a little too lax with the, the social media managers, because the way this works is there is somebody in charge or a couple people in charge of the Facebook, their Twitter, all this stuff. It's usually a PR agency. And for some reason, I don't know why, they decided this was a good idea. I think it's very telling that it was taken down. I don't think it was ever supposed to be there. Uh, I, I guess this was just somebody's mistake. They didn't know what they were doing. Again, it's not engineers in there, guys, running this Facebook page. It's people who can communicate well to crowds and be politically correct. It's not an engineer who is all about coding and figuring out how to make these chips smaller and faster. Their job is not to do that. So don't don't get this all wrong. This is not engineers posting this. After this was taken down, a couple of people over at switchcore.net decided to reach out to Arm and ask them, hey, what happened exactly? They got this in response. Hello, Andrew, it is not an official statement. We will be removing the post to end any confusion. Thanks for the message. So no, this is not an official statement. There's two things that could have happened here. One, somebody jumped the gun and thought, oh, we must have A57s in there. I guess the engineering department didn't send something over. Let's just put it up. Awesome. The second thing is that they decided for some weird reason to breach the NDA that they're probably under. Now what happened here is ARM probably provided the instruction set and, and the stock processors or however they do it and more than likely nvidia or whoever went ahead and started working on those a57s if this is the case so even if arm knows that there are a57s there they have no idea how they've been modified and that's very common for companies to take stock a57s or 53s that run in the big little and just completely turn them upside down and do all kinds of stuff to them to match what they want it to do the other thing to take from this is even if it is an A57 processor, it still doesn't tell us if it's Maxwell or Pascal or an X1 or a P1 because the X1 uses A57s and the Parker P1 set also uses A57s, but the Parker set also has NVIDIA's kind of proprietary Denver cores that they are using for more high-speed single-threaded applications. And yeah, the A57 is a good quad-core processor. It's low-powered, low-heat, and it works. I mean, it would be fine as a quad core, depending on the frequency, which would be a big question here. If it's the frequency from Foxconn, it's fine. It would run most of the same third-party games that you see on an Xbox One or PS4, probably with some minor tweaks, obviously, to match the ARM and the restrictive coding. 
but that's not a big deal. They can get around that. So yeah, guys, the big factor here is still going to be GPU. Even if it wasn't A57, we would still it still would tell us nothing. To be honest, it would just tell us, hey, it can run AI and do better draw calls and everything than the Wii U could ever do. So great. But we've already seen Breath of the Wild run as a big open world game. We've seen Skyrim coming to the system. FIFA is coming to the system for what that's worth. I'm not really sure which games are coming out that are going to be big time CPU hogs. But right now we can assume that Breath of the Wild with its large open world may affect the CPU more than say NBA 2K18 for example. But yeah guys, nothing was confirmed today despite ARM for some reason reaching out to everyone on their Facebook page. Again, I assume it was just a miscommunication on their part with their social... Uh, their social media people, their PR agency, and it got all mixed up. They ripped it out of there. So even, honestly, there is a chance it could be A57. If it's the next one, it's probably using A57. If it's a P1, it's probably using an A57. So that's that at least makes sense. I do think we're getting to the point where we're starting to realize the A7 series, the 73s, for example, or 72s, are maybe a little too new considering they were still kind of in development in 2016 and then released. I think the A57s would make more sense in the long run just because you're going to get start to get diminishing returns with better ARM processors between the two with A57s probably cheaper and easier on our end to get. So I would not think too much of it if it is A57. We should be more worried right now about what the actual GPU is in the system. But you can also just look at the games and see what you think as well. And that's it for now, guys. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would just keep looking forward to March 3rd unless Nintendo or Nvidia come out and say something. I wouldn't worry about it at all, to be honest. It's just we want to know what we want to know what's in this. I get that, but don't worry about it. We'll know more when people start tearing it down. Like I'll be taking mine apart, but then people will get the die shots with the X-ray and everything and look into it completely. Someone will probably delit it. I'm worried to delit mine because I don't want to break it. But we'll see. It's not too much longer. It's only like 23 days or so. So we're we're getting there, guys. Uh, but I'll see you tomorrow morning for Newswave.